we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Urgency of Change. This and next week's episodes are Krishnamurti in conversation with Pupu Jayaka. This week's dialogue is on God. Next week is titled Living with Death. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust based at Brockwood Park in the UK. For more information about activities and programs at Brockwood, such as the Krishnamurti Retreat Centre, Brockwood Park School, and more about the Foundation, please visit our website at kfoundation.org. You can also find our daily quotes and videos on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Pupu who died in 1997, was an Indian cultural activist and writer best known for her work on the revival of traditional and village arts, handlooms and handicrafts. She was a close friend of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and was her cultural advisor and biographer. Having been to a school established by Annie Besant, Pupu became involved with Krishnamurti's work in the 1940s, becoming a trustee of the Indian Foundation. This conversation between Krishnamurti and Jaka was recorded at Brockwood Park in 1981. Jaka begins by asking if they can discuss and investigate into the nature of God. They go on to question whether we can completely negate the whole movement of knowledge, except the knowledge of driving a car, speaking a language and technological knowledge. Can one totally empty the whole accumulation of a million years? We never say, I don't know. That is an absolutely motionless state of mind. One of our difficulties is that we all want to know, which means put what God is into the bag of knowledge. Can we have an insight into the movement of knowledge so that the insight stops the movement? It's not that we stop the movement or the brain stops the movement, but the very insight is the ending of knowledge and the beginning of something entirely different. Is it possible to quieten thought completely? Is it possible to be free of the meditator? Then there is no problem. Then there is no question of whether there is God or no God, because it doesn't matter. Then... Meditation is the meditation of the universe. I want to ask you a question which I don't think we have ever discussed. And yet, perhaps you will say that it is not possible to discuss it. And yet, I think it is right the question should be asked. And that is, can we discuss and investigate into the nature of God? Of? God. God. You, whenever the word has been used, you have said, The word is not the thing. The word is not God. And you have never proceeded to explore into the nature of that which lies behind it. Are you you asking a question, what is creation? Or is there a, a reality 
or truth as God. You see, God is a word. Yes. Behind that word have been millennia of man's inquiry and search for something which is absolute, total, untouched. And universal, quite. Universal. Now, I am asking you whether it is possible to investigate into it. If you can investigate into everything else, Welcome. why is it not possible to investigate into the nature of, call it God, call it creation, call Quite. it the ultimate reality, the ground? I think it is possible, isn't it, really? <coughs> Could we clear our minds of all belief, of all traditional acceptance of that world, and the implications and the consequences of that world. Could the brain and mind be totally be free to investigate into this thing called the the Israelis call it the nameless, the Hindus call it the Brahman, the highest principle, and the whole world, Western and perhaps some of the Eastern world, believe in the word God. <coughs> Could we put away all those beliefs altogether? And that's only, it, then only it's possible to investigate. But being a word, it is a storehouse of content, the content which man has put into it. Yes. And therefore, when the mind says it is free of belief, what does it exactly mean? A person says, I believe in God. He's, all, he's the, you know, he's the omnipotent, omnipresent, he is imminent, he exists in all things, as the Hindus would say, and so on. There is this deep traditional acceptance of that word, with all its content, with all its sequence, as in the Christian world, the Son of God, and the worship of the Son, who has, and so on, so on, and so on. Could we really be free of all the burden of million years of this tradition? Conscious as well as unconscious burdens of, of that word. Because yes, that word has played a tremendous part in the world, both in the Islamic world, in the Christian world, and so on. You see, at one level, it is possible to say, one is free. If you were to ask me, do I believe in God, do I believe in Krishna, Rama, no, Brahman, I would say. No, no, so it's silly. But that is not the final thing. No, no. There is a feeling which goes much beyond this, which The factor of life itself. Are you, the, are you asking, if I may, what is the origin of all this? Before I go even to the origin of it, I'm trying to comprehend the state of my mind which says the outer beliefs are out. out. But is there not still? that sense that without this nothing could be, that this is the ground. And this, now, Dr. Bowman will discuss this. What is the ground 
from which everything originates. The ground, yes, the ground of being. Yes. Now, again, I must, if I may repeat, how does one find that out? One can only find it out or come to it when one is absolutely free. Otherwise, you cannot. Because we are conscious as well as unconscious being is loaded, crowded, burdened with all this. Sir, we have... um, uh, We are at a point where any movement of the mind as belief outer in a particular God is negated. I understand that. Negating that... Uh, does one negate it uh, uh, verbally, intellectually, or deeply at the very root of our being, says, I know nothing? And stop from I can't say I know nothing. I think you see it's little let me Yes, yes, naturally. I can't say I know nothing. But I can say that even the movement of thought as belief does not rise in my mind. Even the movement of thought as belief does not rise. So that there is nothing left to be negated outwardly as such. But I still do not know the state where I know nothing, which is a very different state of course. from an Negation. outer movement of as belief. Of course. So could we? So how, how, how does one proceed? That's what I want. Let's go into that a little bit. Can we negate completely the whole movement of knowledge? Except in knowledge, in driving a car, speaking a language, technological knowledge and all that. We won't go into that. That's fairly simple and clear. But the feeling that one knows, the feeling that there is somewhere deeply within one, the whole accumulated experience of man which says there is God. Or there have been prophets, there have been sayers say that there is no such thing as God. You see, I mean, the knowledge of all that, that's what I want you, to get at. You see, What has comprehended, if I may use that word, the way of negating the rising movement, let me put it this way. The The arising of... Yes. The uh, rising movement, one has comprehended the negation of. But the depths, the dormant, billion years which lie which form the matrix of my being. I think that how is what does one, one touch. That's what one has to deny. But how does one touch it? How does one? All right. Could we begin not inquire into the what's the nature of God, if there is God, etc. Could we begin by asking why human mind has always worked or struggle with becoming. Becoming not only outwardly, but inwardly, based essentially outwardly on knowledge, inwardly also on knowledge. I am, I will be, I so on, so on, so on. The everlasting mounting, uh, uprising, being somebody, 
Now, if I may ask, are the two related in any way? Hmm? Are the two related in any way? The is two, the, which is two? We started with this question of an investigation into the nature of God. God. And we said belief, the rising is so yeah. Now, this matrix which I was talking about and this movement of becoming. Aren't they related together? Yes, that's what I'm going to I say. think they are. Let's look at it. I may be wrong. Let's look at it. My being is essentially based on what I have understood. Understood not intellectually, verbally, the feeling that there is in me a deep understanding of this something enormous, or something incredibly immense that that part of my being, part of my knowledge, part of my tradition and so on. That's what I'm talking about. If one has that as the, as the matrix, as the ground on which I, one stands, then one is not actually free to investigate into the whole nature of God, universe, and so on, so on, so on. Sir, may I ask, there is a, a heritage, as you put it, of that in probably every human mind. Is that heritage different from what we would uh, perhaps incorrectly view as a sort of human instinct in every species of human? throughout history there has been a movement toward this thing yes, no. which, uh, to which heritage attaches. Is it only heritage handed down or is it a deep human uh, movement that is innately in the human uh, mind apart from all influence? Are you saying this is inherent in man? Is it? Or is it is the, you're asking we is think this of? inherent in man or heritage has yes. given it this feel? Which? You are referring to the movement of becoming or the thrust towards the, that, the existence of that which is ultimate. Which is there an inherent movement? in every human mind toward some unknown something which is sought, is it beyond what one is taught, what one somehow picks up through one's heritage? Is it genetic, in other words, practically? More or less, yes. In genetics, as far as I've understood, time is involved. Right? Genetics is the, is the matrix. I mean, that is not different. Time Genetics is the head. And a movement to growth, evolution, right? Yes, yes, it's a biological right? movement. Bi- as far as I understand, correct me if somebody from wrong. But all that, Pupuji, that's what I want to get at. Can one totally empty all that? The whole accumulation of million years. It, it may be because that may be totally wrong. Even if there is an inherent thing, even that too. Even that too. Because that may be implanted in us from childhood, from centuries and million years that there is something beyond this. I think that is most deep-rooted bondage, deep-rooted something the unconscious, deep thing holds to. Otherwise we have nothing. And that, I think, if we want to investigate, that must go too. No. I mean, hasn't 
sinning, the Buddhist scholar sinning. No, Nagarjuna, hasn't he? Has he ever said this? Well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know exactly, but they talk of the river of sorrow in Dukkha. River of sorrow. So, which is the river of life, in which everything I know all that. I mean, and I've been told. But I, I'm trying I mean, to that find... That goes right to the last movement of the unconscious mind. It is a total thing. But uh, again, sir, uh, to give me you see, is it possible, without a thing being exposed, for it to end? Let's expose it. Now, how does I mean, one expose I mean, of course. How does one expose this, which one, one cannot formulate, which is beyond the total particulars of any one person's knowledge? Uh, Listen, sir. Yes. I understand what you're saying. I know. Carry you know, on. I can, I can, I can go through the whole of my knowing, and yet it will not contain. Oh this. no, you can't. I agree. It will not contain. But, the, but don't you have the feeling or the in, the insight, if I may use that word insight, into the feeling, into into this question that. There must be total elimination of everything man has put together. Well, sir, part of the, as I see it, part of the problem, if we, if we totally deny I'm not all denied. of this, or if we See, we, our perceptions, these you ask if we have some in, small insight into the need to do all of this. If we begin to reject everything, we, we need to reject our small perceptions, our small insights, the, even the small things which bring us here and which, which show us that uh, there's something in, in what you're saying. No, but Pupulji is asking quite a different question, sir. She's asking... Could we investigate, explore into what is called God, which is the origin of all things, or the beginning of all things? But aren't you saying that even to begin that, we need to put aside all the beliefs and all of the, this matrix, this ground that we stand on, and I'm wondering if our small insights and perceptions are not all mixed up with that. But oh, the insights have to go. So everything has to go, even the our... Insight that I, I comprehend. The insights have to go, what we consider insights. I think... Then how even does one begin to investigate this? By den- even I our... You deny even the, the basis for our perceiving something. No, but the insight is over, so it, it's part of that already. It is as much that as any other. To take an insight which is over is as much part of belief. So, I mean, I, that I comprehend. I comprehend all the movement of that which arises in the brain being. But they, that, that this layer of uh, and the question then arises. Perhaps one is asking the wrong question. Perhaps there can never be a negating of that. How can one negate that? No, I'm just being. Man has tried in so many ways to find this, right? He's fasted, he's uh, tortured himself, he denied physically or everything to find this, right? 
But there is always, he is always anchored to something. Yeah. Like the great Christian mystics and so on. They are always anchored in Jesus. You know, all they are anchored. And from there they move. Right? May I ask you a question? Do you think we are anchored to you? Maybe. That's it. That's so that's. I, no, but I have to ask that. Question. Yes, you may be. You have, to, but that's rather trivial. If but you don't mind. It is not. It is not. It is not. But if you are, brush it aside. Are we not? Excuse me. Are we not anchored to the few things which we oh, see as of true? Course. If you are, then put away where the anchor. <laughs> so one one can see the uh, being unanchored from all the answers. Can one also be unanchored from the question? Oh yes, oh yes. In other words. Uh, all the answers to what reality, God, etc., that are deeply in us, that perhaps can be negated. I wouldn't but even ask. You see, can one you, not stop the search? I, I mean, wouldn't even ask that search? question. What is God? Because then my brain starts spinning a lot of yes, words. Yes, but as it seems to me we've already quickly gone beyond the replies because that's obviously what's been put upon our minds one way or another. But behind that remains the inquiry. Now is that... I what do you mean inquiry? The inquiry, where is there something else? Is there this thing, call it whatever you want? The, the movement toward that seems to be innately in us. Is A that movement towards that? Toward Finding out ah, that, then a question that only, movement is not an answer. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. If my investigation is a movement into the understanding of what is called God, hmm, right? That movement itself is a bondage. Why? Huh? Why? What do you mean, where? Why? Oh, why? Obviously, movement means towards something. Well, action. Which movement implies time. So, when you are introducing all that, no, sir, I, I don't mean to. I'm trying to get behind that. Otherwise, all right. What are we all they doing? Don't, what are you talking let's about? Use what are we words asking? That have implications of time. No, no. Just no. Let, me, let me explain the implications of time. Implications of going towards something, leaving something behind and moving forward. Any of those of such movements imply time, trying to find something, all that. I said all that must stop. Then how can Ah, People ask ah, that question. That's the whole point. No, question. that's the whole point. Can one do such a thing, first of all? Is that possible? To be so totally non movement? Otherwise, movement is time, thought, and all that th complicated things involved in it. First of all, why do we want to find the meaning of God? The world, we deny the world, but the meaning behind all that. Why do we want to find it? Part of us, there is still. Is part? Oh, go ahead. Is a part of us 
If he's seeking, searching, asking, demanding, is there, is there not? Which feels that there is. Ah, that's it. That's it. We never say, I don't know. There's a state of mind that's absolutely motionless, because I don't know. I think that's all about different. We all want to know, which means put into the bag of knowledge what God is. It's a isn't it? The ear listening, the eye seeing, the word said with the whole volume of actuality in it, of what God is, necessary to wipe out this matrix. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Should not the ear listen? Huh? Should not the ear listen? Ah, then it will listen to what is already known. No, I am asking you now. That can, no, can, can there be a listening? No, no wait, wait, wait. Can you wipe out the matrix? I'm, I, I don't know. Which is what? I really don't know. When you use the word, now wait, wait, when you use the word matrix, what do you mean by that? I only know, I do know, that beyond the, the risings of, in my mind of the obvious beliefs and all Cut that, all that that there are depths and depths and depths to me. You use a very significant phrase in some way or the other, I remember reading it. Play, play, you use the word play, play round with the deep. Yes, yes, yes. So you, you also posit a depth which is beyond the outer risings. So this depth, which is really not within the matrix, within the no, 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 can't. That's why people here and others, I'm just asking myself, why do I want to find out if there is something beyond all this? Because, Krishnaji, let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm putting aside everything else now. And I'm repeating what I said earlier. I said, this matrix I can do nothing about. I then wonder what you call matrix. Would you explain to me what This you mean? depth of which I cannot bring to the surface of daylight, of, the, of consciousness, of perception, of attention, that which does not come within the purview of my eyes and my ears, but still is there. It's still there. I know it is there. I can't help it. I carry it. It's part. It's me. I say, not being able to do it, not being able to touch it, I have a feeling that perhaps if there's a right listening and seeing to that, that of which that. is true. You mean of that death? Of, yes. Yeah. That will work. Just a minute. Just a minute. I've got I understand what you're saying. Now just, just go into it. Is that death, if I may use, let's use that word for the moment, understandable? No. Measurable? No. Then is it, why do you use the word death? That means measurable. 
That I'm means... I'm using the word depth to connote. You see, if it was within the, if the, the contours of my horizon, available to my senses, available to my senses, I understand that. then it is measurable. But it, it is not available to my senses. I can do nothing about it. I do not have the instruments to, to be with it. How do you know, I'm just me, I'm not being imprudent or disrespectful. How do you know it is not imagination? How do you know it? Do you know it as an experience? Yes. And then it's ah, careful, careful, careful. Yes, sir, you that what you see. I want the word which immediately can. If you say yes, it's a trap. If you say no, it's a trap. So I want to be clear that we so both. Would you forgive me? I want to be quite clear that we both understand the meaning of that word, death. I'm talking of a feeling. Surely, sir, a word can be said from the surface mind, and a word can be said which has a great volume behind it. And I am saying that even at the level, with my, even me, that there, are, there, are, there is this ground which contains the whole history of man alone. If you take the history of man, it's not a light thing. It's a, it's a got great weight and depth. Yes, yes. Now, one can feel that weight and depth without your asking me, is it imagination? Can't you feel that way better? I understand, Papa, but you see. You see, if I then, then there is, then there is, you see, then there is nothing to be done but to just look and listen. There is no question you can ask yourself. And in that depth, is it depth of silence? Which means the mind the brain is utterly still. Not something that comes and goes. sense of attachment to it. You know, sense of memory involved. Will you this let's begin again? Whole world, practically whole world, believes in God. When we were in Ceylon, they were terribly upset when I talked about it. God was just put together by thought. But the whole world believes in God. 
the Buddhists have slipped into it, unfortunately. <coughs> I don't know what God is. I start with. I really don't know. Probably I can never find out. And I'm not interested in finding out. Hmm? But what I am concerned is whether the mind, mind including brain or not, mind can be totally, completely free from all the accumulated knowledge, experience and so on of humanity. Because if it is not, it will function always within that area. Expanded, contracted, uh, vertically, horizontal, it will always be within that area. Doesn't matter how much knowledge one accumulates, it will still be within that area. And if, if, if the brain, if the mind moves from that area, and says, I must find out, then it is still carrying that area to a further dimension. I don't know if I'll make much of that. So, I, my concern is whether the brain and the mind can be completely free from all taint of knowledge. Knowledge, of course, I need knowledge for technological. I'm not talking about it. So can it be free? That, that to me is tremendously significant. Because if it is not, it will never be out of that area. Never. And any movement of the mind, any movement? Out of that area to find out. Is still moving, anchored in knowledge, trying to add further knowledge about God. It is logical. So I would say, my concern is that whether the brain, the mind is capable of this. See, when you put a question of that kind, either you say it is not possible, or it is, if you deny both the possibility and probability of it, then what is. You follow? Could I have an insight, I'm talking, the depth of insight into the movement of knowledge? So that the insight stops the movement, not I stop the movement, or the brain stops the movement, or the very insight into that is the ending of this knowledge and the beginning of something entirely. So I'm concerned only with that. The ending of knowledge, consciously, deeply, over, you follow all that. Please, not the ending of knowledge, examinations and all that, please don't be sexual. Virtually everyone at some time has some kind of a religious experience, if I can call it. Uh, maybe a feeling of oneness, 
or something. Now, where does that come from? Is that also part of the conditioning of man's brain yeah. of the centuries? Isn't it? Isn't it? Of all there is this enormous feeling that we're all one. Huh? It's selfish. Right? Yes. There's a feeling nature with nature, with human beings, with each other. That there is actually no separation. And there seems to be a strong sense of reality. There, there is great yes. And it's something extraordinary feeling. But that feeling, that sense of tremendous harmonious unity, if it's not, if it's intermittent, you see, you see, you follow me, there's no point. But where does it, where does it come from then, this feeling? But it's part of, when you look at the sky, the green earth, you follow, and just for the moment you forget yourself. Right? You forget that you are, um, your troubles, your problems, your sex demands. You forget completely yourself for a second, the whole thing is this. But Christians, you has the me, the me which has created all the religions of the world, which has built all the beauty of the world, the culture of the world, the art of the world, has that no, that me, no relationship whatsoever with what may be called God? Probably that's the real issue. Maybe the problem can one be free from the me. The me is the essence of knowledge. No? I don't know. Krishna. I'm not being too critical. <laughs> So then, what about all the experience of the past saints who say that they've dissolved the me and uh, that they're, uh, I mean, what would you say? Would you say that's imagination? Who says this? I mean, uh, their words. But are they anchored in something else? I may say I'm free, but I adore uh, Buddha. I'm anchored deeply in the teachings of the Buddha, in the persons of the Buddha, in the, all that. All the Christian, you know, counterpart of that. I was that, to... that may be another substitution of the self by an A. Yes, but I was also thinking of uh, the poets who haven't spoken in terms of a Christ or a Buddha. Who? Uh, there are some poets. Yes. Who have not talked that, in religious that may terms. partial insight. Uh, they've talked about feeling one with nature. Yeah, that be, yes, for a moment, for a period. You see, I doubt all these things personally. I question. I doubt everything man has put there, including myself. You follow what I'm saying? I think that's a very cleansing. Mm. Attitude, feeling. So you start with extraordinary f feeling of not knowing about anything. If you could say, I know nothing in the deeper sense of the world, not just intellectual or the rest of it, you are the universe, you follow it. Not, you're not you, are not it. It is there. I don't follow it. I don't even have to explore. So 
So I think our difficulty arises that even momentarily we have that insight. That again becomes knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, it's, then it becomes, you know. Krishnaji, could, could we talk a little bit more about this, this understand that's not, that's not temporary. This, uh, this questioning which, which you talk about, which seems to be so complete, and which I, I would have to say, I, I, know it's, uh, I know nothing about it. It's, it's, could we what, talk a little what bit? Are of, things, what are you asking? With this questioning of everything that you talk about, this having no anchor that you speak oh, of. Well, but can't you see the importance of it? Yes, I can, no, sir, no, wait, wait. as you speak. Do you see the importance of it intellectually, verbally, or a great feeling that you want to show me? Yes, sir. But that's not enough. No, be, you know, wait. Quick, ask yourself if it's intellectual, mm -hmm. emotional, verbal, and so on, so on. What are we talking about at the moment? Well, so this having no anchor, this putting us, this complete. absolute, complete putting aside of things, and it is don't something. Don't you see? Don't you see the importance? Of yes, sir, I do. No, no, but wait, wait, sir, be careful. But apparently, that's not enough because it's still not done. Ah, therefore, that's it. All right. Now that's the that's the. That is the situation. No, don't choose. Isn't it? Isn't it a tremendous bondage to yes, always sir. live in this area? Yes, and, and I can see that it's the source of not distortion. It's the source of distortion. It's the source of suffering. It's a. But still, there must be more. This. There must be a, a larger perception or understanding of it than the one that I now have. Somehow, somewhere, one is missing some, some little missing uh, link. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to find what it is that. It I understand what you are saying. Look, Papaji, just wait. <coughs> Suppose this person is not here. How would you deal with this problem? How would you deal with the problem of God? The problem of belief, the problem of saying absolute no anchor is that possible? How would you, as a human, just just not verbally but actually deal with it? If each one of us. Could we deal, deal with it without any reference to anybody? Yes, even that is possible. No. That move is from there, move from yes, there. Let's possible. move from there. Let's move from there. Each one of us is totally responsible. For ourselves in saints, that we are not referring to the past authorities, to saints, to other peoples, totally responsible to answer these questions. You have to answer them, you can't say, Well, I'll think about it. See, this is where 
Why should I have to answer? You have to. You see, why should I have to answer? I'll tell you why. This is, you are part of humanity, and humanity is asking these questions. The philosophers, the saints, the, every human being is in somewhere in his depth is asking these But so you questions. said that those questions all, in a sense, are wrong, in that they come from... But I said so. Yes. You answer it without any reference to what Kay has said and has not said. I come to you with these questions. I'm a stranger, I come to you. I say, please, as a, as a human being, and you're also a human being, apparently you have gone to this mall, and tell me, answer me. I put you these questions. To me, these questions and, and the answers are tremendously important. May I ask you one thing? How does one take a question like this and leave it in consciousness? Huh? Please, sir, please. Uh -huh. How does one take a question like this? Like what? What we've been discussing. Yes, I'm, I'm a human. I am a human. Question I'm asking of man. This question which yes. of man. How does one take a question of, like that? One has to hold it in consciousness. You, it has to be... Either Prabhupada, either you have never thought about it, just me, let's go step by step. Either you have never thought about it, or you have thought about it in the sense that you have gathered tremendous information, knowledge from books and all the rest of it, or you say, let's not. Perhaps it's the first time I'm facing this question without any reference to anybody. Sir? We, we, we go slow, go slow, go slow. No, I would like to pursue this. You have the way of taking a question. asking it, and then without any movement of the mind, yes. remaining with it. Yes. And that's that, my that, that, peculiarity. That, that, that's what I want to know. That's my, perhaps that's peculiar, uh, you do think, whatever it is. Because what one does when one asks a question, there's a movement of the mind. Yeah, that's right. Now, with you, when such a question is put, there is no, it is there, but there is no movement. That's right. You're right. Now, you're asking me how to get it. No, I don't, I'm not saying, <laughs> I, I know I can't get it. No, you can have, no, you're right to ask that question. But that, that seems to be... You understood what she said, sir? Go to it, do it. I'm asking you as a human being, and as a human being who have asked these questions for a million years, I come to you and put this question. Are you ready to answer, or react to it, or hold the question quietly? Hold it. You understand? You understand what I mean? And that very holding and quiet holding, you know what I mean, in the sense without any response, without any reaction, just hold it. And out of that vessel comes the answer. Right? That's impossible. Anyway. 
Could you say something, Krishnaji, about the nature of that holding? A cup holds the water, right? A pond is held by the earth, you know, holding, you know, the sense without any way, without any movement, without any sense of trying to find an answer for it. It's uh, with most of us, perhaps, we may not try to find an answer. We may just stay quietly with a, an unanswered question. But sooner or later into that comes some sort of an answer which may not be a real answer. It may just be something from a very deep part of the subconscious wells up and fills that space. I know. Now, just a minute. I ask you a question. Do you believe in God? I ask you that question. Can you? Can you say, I don't know, or, or I don't believe, or maybe without saying anything about it? Just look at the question. Can you? It's a good display. If you ask a devout Christian, who goes to church every morning and sings praises of God and all that, sings songs of praise. Immediately say, yes, of course I believe in God. Or if you go to India and ask those people in reply, also the same thing. That is their reaction to well-programmed mind, like a computer. Which has been programmed to believe in God, and you press the button, it flies instantly. Right? Now, but I don't want to reply. Instantly. I don't know. I really don't know if it's God or not. Sir, but even that holding which you're talking about, there could be another kind of holding which people do is the kind of holding when people say, sleep over a problem, ah. which is different from the oh, holding God, you're talking God. about. It demands tremendous muscle in the mind. Are you saying that holding is not of this area? What? Are you saying that holding is not of this area? Of course. What do you mean of not of this area? The area you were talking about of coming from all the knowledge which we have already. But in holding, isn't there any kind of inquiry? What? In holding something, isn't there any... We understand that there is no movement really as knowledge, but isn't there an inquiry? In it? No. <laughs> it's the same game again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just let me tell you. I'm afraid, unless you understand this, you lead a lot of misunderstanding. The 
so computers which have been programmed by ten different professors with their tremendous information, you put, they, the computer analyzes all these professors' questions, I mean responses and their attitudes, their ideas, their what they say, and it makes a, a synthesis of it, right? And replies. Now, our brains are trained that way. We have been programmed to be Christians, Hindus, uh, Buddhists, or British, or this or that. We have been programmed for thousands of years. And that programmed brain replies immediately. Right? Right? Of course, this is wrong. This is what we are doing. Now, if the brain is not programmed, it hesitates, right? She says, I don't, I'm looking, I'm watching, I don't know. It is, it is, what? It is looking around. Hmm? Now, can our brains be not programmed? But this, this activity of the brain looking around, this kind of activity, is not the kind of holding that no, you were of speaking of before. Of course. Can we say something more about this go holding? Go on, say it. I, have, go ahead. I, have, I have nothing to say about it, Krishnaji. Go on and qu- push, push. Well, I'm trying to. You see, I, there's a couple of questions which, which come to mind and which probably are improper questions. But you say, for instance, as the cup holds the water, or as the earth ho- holds the pond, can, is, there, is there something that does this holding, like no, the cup no, and like no, the earth? No, Say for instance, you are, you are, no. People ask, people do ask me a question. She was, depth. Hmm? And this, what? You do the same. Now go. I ask you that question. You listen to that question. What was your reaction to that question? Which question exactly, sir? From the depth. You layer after layer, go to the very deep depth, depth which is the ground from which it, etc., etc. You heard that. Mm-hmm. Now, <coughs> what's your reaction to that. I'm using the word purpose, reaction. I was just trying to understand what was being talked about. It's, uh, I was trying to listen to what you were meaning by it and what Pupuji was meaning by it. I had no, I was just listening to it. I don't think that answers your question. No. No. You see, sir, when a question normally when a question normally is put to the mind, it's like a, yeah. a drop of sugar being dropped on the ground and ants coming from all over towards right, it. Right. So all the movement is awakened <clears throat> and there's a movement of all the hidden layers to move towards that question. Now, the question is, can that question be put, remain without the the movement of these? Without the (laughs) ants. Thinking of that. So, I was wondering one question. Um, Would you say that uh, when we think of the mind or the brain, would you say that could say perhaps it's for thinking, but that also there's something in the brain that's not thinking. In other words, that an important uh, function or faculty of the brain is not thinking. So I believe, as I don't know if I'm being wrong, I would be correct. I would like to be correct about this. <coughs> I believe the brain 
when it is quiet, hmm? without the operation of thought, problems, all that. When, it's, when thought is not operating, the brain itself has its own movement. Right? Do you mean conscious thoughts, sir? Or Both conscious and conscious. Any form of pressure, conscious or unconscious pressure of thought. This is what I am saying. The brain has its own quiet movement. That is, that's na- natural. Blood going to it, you follow, moving it and all the rest of it, nerves, all that is operating. Now, I'm not talking quite in that part. You understand? Mm-hmm. You can't. That's the physiological part. That's a, it's a muscle. It's a, right. Now, we are, we are talking about the brain, which is in constant movement, the energy of which is thought. Right? To quieten that Quieten thought is the problem. I want to feel me. I understand my question. Now the problem is how will you deal with this question? How is it possible to quieten the thought completely? Not for a few seconds. Completely. Go out for a walk and not have a single thought in your head. Krishnaji, is it correct to say that the brain, just plain physiologically, is always recording, even in sleep, even in unconsciousness? The recording process goes off. But can we differentiate just for this discussion between the incoming recording, whatever it is, very low level, and the stirring of the already established content, which would be thought. Now, are you saying that in this empty... Non-recording. Uh, Only observing. There isn't the... Well... Now, wait a minute. Uh, there wouldn't be the stirring of the content, which yes. is thought. Yes, that's right. But there would still be the incoming... Then that the you, see, is... you see the tree, that we think all tree, the bird, but there is no... Uh, no There's no reaction is, out of... This leads to some, something else. Is this related to this holding that you're talking about, Krishna Jain? Sir, I'm... No, com- don't complicate it, sir. Just take it easily. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll put you a question. Don't try to answer it instantly. Yes. You know, look at it, play, hold it. It isn't an examination you have to answer within an hour, certain ten questions. It is a mind that is capable of not reacting immediately, delaying the reaction perhaps indefinitely. <laughs> now to go back, Papaji, let's go a little further. I have no anchors. Suppose I have no anchors at all. Neither in belief in knowledge. All that is absolutely meaningless. I'm a stranger, I've come to that point. I see it has no meaning. Is that the sense of not giving any meaning to anything. Is that a state of mind
which is out of time. Follow the magic. Yes. No, no, no. So, is that the state of real, profound meditation? A meditation that in which there is no sense of achieving all oh, that rubbish goes out of it completely. And that meditation may be <coughs> the ground, the origin of all things. Not the meditator, follow it. Now, may I ask you? Ah, we are getting something. The meditator is not the ground. Oh, of course, I have that three out. But without the meditator, can the ground be? Without the meditator, yes. If the meditator is there, ground is not. Ground is not. But without the meditator, without. I said, I say very carefully, meditation. No, that is true. Without the meditator. Meditation is a human process. No, no. no. I, let me investigate you a little now, if I may. Yes, go to it. Because let's let's carefully go into this. Meditation cannot be free of the individual. Of individual means. The meditator. Keep meditator. the word meditator. meditator. There is no meditation without the meditator. You may say the meditator is not the ground. No, no, just me, just me, just me. As long as I am trying to meditate, just I want to go slowly into it. As long as I am trying to meditate, Meditation is not. Yeah. Right? Following yeah. systems, methods, uh, throw it all out. Therefore, there is only a brain, mind, which is in a state of meditation. That is the ground. The universe is in a state of meditation. Sorry. And that's the ground, that's the origin of everything. That's only possible when the meditator is not. And that is only possible when there are no anchors. Absolutely. Now. That means there is absolute freedom from problems, conflicts, sorrow, or fear. That state of meditation is, has come about because it's complete ending. So, beginning may be the eternal process, the beginning, never, you don't know what I mean? Am I? You are catching something? It may be eternal beginning. Now, let me, how does how is this possible? Is it at all possible for a brain, for a human being, to be so completely, utterly free of the meditator, which is essentially the self?
The meditator is trying to meditate, to get somewhere, to find something, in order to put his life right, or he meditates in order to put life in order. You follow? Put it either way. Either way in the sense, you meditate to put life in order, hmm? or you watch, put your life in order, then meditate. It is still the meditator. Right? Is that possible to, to be free of the meditator? Then we, there is no problem. Then there is no question whether there is God or no God. Who cares? Then your that meditation is the meditation of the universe. How how do we is it possible for you to be so utterly free of the meditator? Huh? I'm asking that question. Oh, don't reply, don't react. Keep it. You want someone? Hold it. Let it operate. You follow what I mean? In the holding of it, the energy is being accumulated, and that energy is beginning to act. Not you are acting, but you understand what I'm saying? 